thanks for checking out this video. Um, that little intro section there was about the extent that my uh, iPhone was going to let me film outside before it decided to shut down because it was cold. So I hope you can bear with me until I can get my hands on a better outdoor camera that will allow me to do uh, filming in the cold weather. But uh, we have received a good, I'd say 10 to 12 inches of snow here. And uh, as you can see by the snow in the tracks, the uh, snowcat has been out and uh, has been playing in the snow. Um, I'm happy to report that it's running quite well. Although uh, you may notice in that little intro clip there, the snowcat working through some of the deeper snow would seem to uh, roll forward and then it would come to a, a little bit of an abrupt halt. And uh, that's really what uh, I was gonna cover in this short video today and explain kind of what's going on and why I haven't really been able to make a lot of action videos. All right, so here's a quick rundown of what's happening uh, when this machine is getting into the deep snow. Basically, uh, I'm gonna say that the machine is, is under motored, meaning that the drive motors uh, up front here that are actually turning the tracks don't have the displacement, the, the surface area, the leverage to turn the track when it gets into the deep snow. And what's happening is basically these motors are stalling out, causing the system pressure to peak. And at about 2,900 PSI, there are relief valves in the drive pumps that open and basically cut the fluid flow. Um, they're doing their job perfectly, actually. Um, it's just that the, the extra load that the machine is encountering is, is causing the motor to stall. The stalled motor peaks up the pressure, the pressure opens the valve, and that's the end. So we need to get a bigger lever to be able to turn these tracks. And a bigger lever in this case means a larger displacement motor. Um, I've arbitrarily chosen to almost double or a little over double the size of these motors because that's the largest form factor that I am able to fit between the two mounting plates inside the lower tunnel area. And so by doubling the displacement, going from 2.8 cubic inches per revolution up to 5.9 cubic inches, I should be able to get uh, from I guess what we're right now would be about 440 inch pounds of torque up to about 940 inch pounds of torque. Uh, and that should be enough to, I think, overcome the resistance being met by the cat in the deep snow. Um, as it stands right now in, in shallower snow, let's say three, four, or five inches deep, um, the tracks aren't having to kind of overcome as much snow, so there's less. Uh, resistance being met by the machine and the cat actually can operate in that scenario quite well. Um, the pressure relief valve isn't opening and it's moving forward just fine but I would like to be able to go through some deeper snow and, and keep the machine going uh, you know when I'm cutting trails or something similar so I think doubling the motors is going to be great the the disadvantage there in doubling the motor size is uh, basically we're cutting the ground speed uh, in half. Um, now right now with this current setup we've got about 16 kilometers an hour ground speed uh, so we're going to be going down by half uh, which would be about eight kilometers an hour. A little slow for me. Um, so the way to regain that ground speed would be to increase the flow of fluid from the pump circulating through the motors. Um, I was able to find uh, a larger pump that could accommodate almost double the flow, not quite. Um, so right now the pumps on this machine are 10 cubic centimeters per revolution. Uh, I was able to find a 16 cubic centimeter per revolution. So uh, if I wanted to get right to the same uh, ground speed as I was before with the new motors, uh, I would need to be somewhere around 21 cc's per revolution. That's getting to be a pretty costly pump and they're a little bit harder to find out there. Um, the 16 cubic centimeter uh, pumps 
found them no problem. They're actually reasonably priced on eBay and uh, they're gonna be here in a day or two. So in the next uh, week or two when the new motors arrive and I've got the new pumps on hand, I'll be able to get everything swapped out. It should be a, a plug and play kind of operation. The, the nice thing about the pumps and motors on the machine, they use an SAEA mounting um, flange style. So basically I should be able to uh, unbolt the motors, pull them out, put the new ones in, bolt them in, hydraulic fittings should all fit uh, without any issues. And same thing for the pumps. Uh, they're an SAEA flange mount uh, as well. Same fittings, same control levers, same everything. Take the old pumps out, put the new pumps in, away we go. And that should help correct a little bit of the, uh, the lack of torque uh, that I'm seeing in a little bit of the deeper snow. Uh, yeah, we should be able to get this uh, machine really tuned in. Aside from that, I'm actually quite pleased with how it's been running. Um, like I said, it works great in a little bit shallower snow, four or five inches. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. It, uh, it does quite well. We're going to be taking it out to the cottage this weekend, and uh, I hope to get a couple of videos. Maybe we can find some trails that have uh, seen a little bit of traffic and uh, patched the snow down already. That's really all it needs. So we're not we're not short on a lot of torque, uh, just a little bit. But um, yeah, hope to get a couple of videos out to you. They might be pretty short, but uh, I hope you enjoy them. Anyway, thanks a lot for checking out this video. Have a great Happy New Year, and we'll see you soon.